Fallout 4 has many ways to play, from pistols to shotguns, to laser rifles, to alien blaster pistols. Now, I wouldn't say that I'd like to see the world on fire, but I can think of a man who does. Can you beat Fallout 4 as a pyromaniac? So, I'll admit it now, this is less of a challenge and more of a playthrough. But with that said, I still experienced a fair bit of trouble. Let's go over the rules first, shall we? Rule 1. I can only use weapons that involve fire. The flamer, the shish kebab, molotov cocktails, and any legendary weapons that have the affix that lets them deal fire damage. I also allowed the use of the plasma thrower as well since it's practically a flamer on steroids. Rule 2. I have to wear a T45 power armor with the hot rod paint job and a gas mask of my choice. Mainly because I felt like wearing power armor for once and the gas mask would complete the look. 3. I spawned in a flamer for myself right at the beginning of the game, and if that bothers you, well, I guess you'll just have to deal with it. It's also set to very hard. Ready? Let's go. I got out of the shower and made my character look like he'd been fighting fires with his face, and then I named myself Bernie Von Brandt, and these were my specials. Bombs started dropping, and I started running. My god, that fiery death cloud is beautiful. Within the safety of the vault, my wife was shot and my son was kidnapped. Once I was out of the cryostasis chamber, I ran through the vault and made sure to lure all of the rad roaches into other rooms so I could pick up the pit boy. From there, I used my cheat holotape to give myself a flamer, and it came with 15 flamer fuel, so it was practically pointless. I also changed my special stats since I needed 5 strength for the heavy gunner perk. When I arrived at Sanctuary, I completely ignored Codsworth in favor of scrapping as much scrap as I could find. Before you go into the comments and tell me about placing certain shelves or wire fences right on top of each other infinitely, just take a look and tell me how great these fence posts are. Or maybe these toolboxes. I love them deeply, and built a lot of them until I hit level 5. I made sure to pick the heavy gunner perk once, and got medic and cap collector as well. Now it was time to attempt a hostile takeover of the Museum of Freedom. Well, not really. I found Concord and went straight to the Cambridge Police Station to meet up with the Brotherhood of Steel. I planned on setting with them for this run. I let Dance do all of the work, and then I agreed to help him at the Arcjet building, but I'd have to get prepared first. I started towards Diamond City, hoping that they would sell some flamer fuel, even though I was a very low level in comparison to when you would normally find fuel. When I arrived at the gate, I listened to Piper talk to Danny, and I was polite enough to not hit her to skip the conversation. I went straight to Arturo, who didn't have any flamer fuel, neither did Myrna. Percy did though, which was a little strange, though I don't know what 8 flamer fuel is going to do for me. I figured that I would try to find Cricket next, since she almost always has a lot of ammo, even if you are a low level. On my way to Bunker Hill, I was chased by a legendary super mutant straight into Good Neighbor. That was very lucky. Now I didn't have to spend forever trying to find it. The walk to Bunker Hill was a little scary since I really didn't have a weapon, but I lucked out when I found a full set of T-45 power armor for the taking, fusion core included. Don't worry, I put the hot rod paint job on it soon. The power armor made the rest of the walk to Bunker Hill very easy, and when I arrived, Cricket was nowhere to be found. I waited for a few days to see if she'd spawn in at Bunker Hill, but it didn't work. So, I went out of my way to find Vault 87 since she stops there every so often. She, of course, wasn't there, so I started fast traveling back and forth from Bunker Hill to Vault 87 until she did spawn. Cricket had about 200-ish flamer fuel, and I was able to buy about half of it. Since I knew I was going to need some cabs handy at all times to buy ammo, I went back to Sanctuary and started working on leveling up again so I could get the Chemist perk, which would allow me to make Poison Caltrops from 5 Steel, which sold for a pretty good price. Once I felt like I'd had enough ammo for now, I made my way back to Concord to help the Minutemen. The Flamer made incredibly short work of the Raiders, and I was talking to Preston before I knew it. He wanted me to help them get out of here, and I obliged. The Raiders outside were once again very easy to kill, but the Deathclaw was a little different. Just like the last Fallout 4 challenge I did, I didn't have the ammo to kill the Deathclaw, so I left and returned to Sanctuary to scrap all of the steel I could to make more Caltrops to sell for ammo. Once I was pretty good on ammo, I decided to put the Minutemen on hold in favor of going back to the police station so I could go to Arcjet since there would be a lot of synths with ammo and guns to sell. I let Dance do most of the work on the way to Arcjet, and when we arrived, I let Dance enter the building without me so I could go back to Sanctuary and mod my flamer a bit. Sadly, I didn't have enough components to actually do that, so I had to go to all of the shopkeepers I could in an attempt to buy some more adhesive and aluminum. Once I was done upgrading my flamer to the max, I stopped at the junkyard and picked up the magazine that would allow me to use the hot rod paint job on my armor, and put it on every piece. Now I was really ready to get this challenge started. Back at Arcjet, Dance was patiently waiting inside for me. When the sins started spawning in, they were no match for Dance and I, and we were able to clear out the majority of them without problems. I was going to wait for a bunch of sins to spawn while Dance was fighting all by himself, but the corpses actually started to disappear, so I flicked the switch and burnt Dance to a crisp. 
He was alright, of course, and we continued to the upper floor and finished off the rest of the sins and got the deep range transmitter. Dance also gave me a really neat laser rifle that I eventually sold, and from there I stopped my stream. Now that I was done with the stream, I decided to do some of the more boring things I needed to do. I stopped at Diamond City and did an interview with Piper, and then I spent a very long time gathering the components I would need to start a purified water farm so I could always have easy caps on hand. Then I spent another 30 minutes farming for water, caps, ammo, and more scrap for water purifiers. Once I was satisfied that I wouldn't need ammo for a while, I decided to head towards Bob Saget Ironworks so I could get the shish kebab and a lot more flamer fuel. On the way there, I was attacked by a legendary rad scorpion and got an irradiated board that I will treasure forever. Once at the Bob Saget Ironworks, I dug in and got to work. Bernie was used to the pain of the flame, but so were these SOBs. Some of them were incredibly difficult to kill since there was such a level gap between us, but I eventually cleared the outside area of the forged. The inside was no different, except that I almost died quite a few times. At least I was getting a solid chunk of ammo for all the ammo I was using. When I reached the room with Slag, I got ready for a very painful fight. The forged surrounding Slag were easily dealt with, and everything was going pretty well until Slag threw a Molotov at me when I was really low health and killed me. The second attempt was a bit different, as I went straight for Slag without hesitation, and that made the fight much easier when he was dead. His body fell in the forge, and I was slightly scared that I wouldn't be able to get the shish kebab, but he was close enough for me to grab it. Now I had a new weapon in my arsenal, and I left Bob Saget Ironworks. I went back to Sanctuary and had the chance to level up my power armor to T-45C. I couldn't do anything with the shish kebab for a while, so I decided to go back to the Museum of Freedom with my large amount of ammo and finish off the Deathclaw that was there. Now Preston and his gang could join me back at Sanctuary. After this, I spent a whole hour trying to increase the output of my water farm and trying to get a decent adhesive farm together so I didn't have to worry about it anymore when I was crafting. Once I had the rest of the farm moving along fairly well, I decided to drop in on Bobby No-Nos and Good Neighbor so I could do the quest for Ashmaker, a minigun that deals fire damage. The quest itself was pretty simple. I agreed to work for Bobby as a miner, and when I entered the mining area, I was bombarded by Myrlurks that were woken up by the mining. I killed them with ease, and Bobby decided that I was a better fit for this op than the other miners, and asked me to meet her at Diamond City to help her break a friend out of jail, which was a lot harder than it looks. I was running out of good ideas to get Mel out of the slammer when he popped out of nowhere without me doing literally anything. Once Mel was out, we all went back to the operation and started mining deeper to get to Diamond City's storeroom. There were a lot of Myrlurks and ghouls in my way, but the flamer cooked them up good. I actually spent way more time down there than I thought because I got lost and thought I possibly broke the quest but I eventually found the right spot to dig. Surprise, Bobby lied to me about this being the Diamond City storeroom. It was actually Hancock's storeroom, and for that she had to die. She also had to die so Fahrenheit would actually give me Ashmaker, but that's aside from the point. Now, I have no idea why so many people in my chat wanted me to get this weapon. It's not that good, especially later when I start fighting harder enemies. Either way you look at it, I made sure to stop back at the museum to grab the minigun for a solid chunk of ammo. I figured since I was going on weapon scavenger hunts that I would go grab the Gainer, a fiery 44 Magnum. It was located in a little bunker by some water, and getting it was as easy as typing in a code on a control panel and grabbing it from next to this bloody skeleton. This one was also not too good of a weapon, but hey, a usable gun is better than nothing. I felt much more prepared to start some serious main quests, so I went to Valentine Detective Agency and started my search for Nick Valentine. So now I was off to the Triggerman's little hidey hole to find Nick. This was probably the first time I realized that this challenge was more of a playthrough rather than an actual challenge, since I usually struggle a little bit more against some of the Triggermen, but the Flamer is just way too good. I also found this holy relic of the Minutemen, and I can say that I am thoroughly mad that I didn't get it in my Preston Garvey playthrough. When we arrived at Vault 114, I was greeted by more Triggermen, which once again felt the burn of my Flamer. I tried out the gainer on Dino, and even with a sneak attack, it was just not going to cut it. So, I ran up and burned him to a crisp, and released Nick from his cell. From here, we wandered around the vault, killing more Triggermen, until we reached Skinny Malone and his girl. I tried to persuade her to leave, but I was also really hoping that it would come down to me burning them all, which it did. Nick and I left, and we finished the quest. After I found that wonderful laser musket, I felt like going on a little legendary run, and since I really didn't want to cheese my way to a good legendary, I decided to do some radiant quests for the Brotherhood since there always seems to be a few legendaries at the places they send me to. I cleared out College Square Station, Super Duper Mart, Mass Pike Tunnel, Trinity Plaza, and Hubris Comics. There were legendaries far and wide, but I didn't get anything worth talking about. Except for a Raider chess piece that caused melee attackers to catch fire, but since I was wearing power armor, it was pointless. I also picked up a plasma pistol that I turned into a plasma thrower, and that was pretty freaking awesome. 
The reason I stopped Reese's Radiant Quest is because it sent me to Far Harbor for the next cleansing, and I really hate that they send you there if you haven't been there yet in the playthrough. So I switched to Halen's quest for a while. I got to do three quests for her before I was directed to Far Harbor, and that ended my hunt for legendaries. I decided to do Dance's quest now, which was just me running around collecting holotapes and following distress signals. I eventually found the last surviving member of the squad that got wiped out, and I took all of his things and returned to Dance. Once I was done, I started grinding for more water, caps, and ammo. Then I stopped playing so I could play some Cold War zombies with my friend. After I was done with that, I went to Valentine Detective Agency and started working more on the main quest. I described Kellogg to Nick, and he suggested that the man described might be Kellogg. <gasps> Who would have thought? Nick and I tagged over to Kellogg's house, and since neither of us are capable of picking the lock, I attempted to bribe the mayor for the key, and when that didn't work, I attempted to bribe his secretary, without enough caps to actually do it. After I came back with the right amount of caps, I was handed the key and went to Kellogg's house looking for clues. Nick once again suggested that we use dog meat to help us sniff out Kellogg, and I agreed. We've all walked the walk to Fort Hagen before, so I'll just skip ahead to finding the fort. When we arrived, I told Dogmeat to leave, and I also told Nick to leave since I let him follow me for some reason. The inside of the fort was crawling with synths, and my flamer was hungry. When the flamer ran out of fuel, I switched over to the plasma thrower, and this was really the first time I got to use it, and oh boy was it overpowered. At least the ammo was expensive, so I couldn't use it all the time. I did make sure to save some ammo for the Kellogg fight, and I think this is a first for me. I had a legendary synth spawn in for the fight with Kellogg, which is pretty cool. But aside from that, he was a pushover, and the legendary I got from the synth was garbage. Ooh, a powered leather left leg. With Kellogg dead, the Brotherhood can come to the Commonwealth in full force, so I made my way back to the police station to hitch a vertebrate ride to the Pridwin. I talked to Lancer Captain Kells, listened to Maxon's speech, and was given a set of power armor that I couldn't wear since I'm stuck in T-45. I went and talked to everyone I had to on the ship, and I was handed my next quest. I was to go to Fort Strong and clear the super mutants there for the Brotherhood. That was a lot easier said than done since they wanted me to take the vertebrate there, and I couldn't leave the vertebrate until I killed the super mutant behemoth at the fort. I hoped that I could just walk to the fort to start the quest, and I was not disappointed. That did mean I had to take on a behemoth and a bunch of other super mutants, but in the end, they were no match for Bernie's burning power, and I was able to clear the outside and inside of the fort. This brought my progression for the Brotherhood questline short for now, as I had to continue with a little bit more of the main quest. That meant that it was time once again to return to Valentine Detective Agency and discuss my findings with Nick. Nick had this great idea wherein we should grab Kellogg's brain and bring it to Dr. Amari to see if she could get it to work. And since I'm always one step ahead, I already had the cybernetic augmentation attached to the hippocampus or whatever. I leveled up after I got done talking with Nick, and I am now level 23. Let's take a look at some of my perks since we haven't in a while. Mainly a lot of perks focused on causing more damage with my weapons and adding more armor to my armor. When I arrived at Dr. Amari, she explained that she could help us, but I'd have to go into Kellogg's memories through Nick since he was capable of handling the tech. Yada yada yada. Walk through all of the memories except for the one we need, which I would also love to be able to walk through since I've done this quest umpteen gajillion times. What we ended up gathering was that the Institute uses teleporter technology to enter and exit the Institute. Now I needed to find someone who could help me figure out how I could get in, but luckily for me, there was also a mention of Dr. Virgil in the memory, who was an escaped Institute scientist that might be able to help. So I was off to the Glowing Sea to find him. For once, there were actually a decent amount of enemies in the Glowing Sea. Of course, that didn't mean anything to an armor-clad, fire-throwing maniac like me. Though it was a good try on the game's part. I made my way to the crazy cultists, and they informed me that Virgil sometimes comes to trade with them, and pointed me in the right direction. When I made it to Virgil's cave, there was a Deathclaw, and for once, I actually decided to kill it. Virgil was cautious, as usual, and said that if I wanted to get into the Institute, that he'd help me if I helped him. I agreed, of course, even though I wouldn't help him, since it wouldn't matter in the long run anyway. Virgil told me the first step was to get a Corsa chip. Big surprise there, right? Oh, very dangerous. Very scary. Gunners are down and missiles are bound. Oh, look, an Institute Corsa. Oops, I killed him. Moving on. With the chip in my hand, I could now take it to the railroad and have it decoded so I could use that data to get into the Institute. I went back to Virgil's cave and got the schematic from him for the teleporter. Don't worry, Virgil. I won't forget our deal. Now, what was it again? I could pick a faction to help me build the teleporter, so I picked the Brotherhood since I was already siding with them. I talked to Elder Maxon, and he said we'll build the teleporter at the airport. Proctor Ingram was to help me, and even though I had to get a few special components for the teleporter, it was pretty easy since I could buy all of them from Myrna at Diamond City. With the teleporter built, I was given a mission from Maxon and Ingram. 
I had to get Dr. Lee to come back to the Brotherhood, and I had to put a holotape in the Institute's network and do a scan or something like that. All I know is that I got blasted into the Institute and put things in stuff. I got the chance to meet Father, aka my son all grown up, and I decided at that moment he would one day burn. For now, I was comfortable with agreeing to side with the Institute so I could explore and get Dr. Lee out of here. When I met Dr. Lee, I was pretty sure if I had a good charisma, I could have skipped this part, but since I have the charisma of a wooden chair, Dr. Lee wouldn't leave with me unless I did a quest for her. Obviously. She wanted to know what happened to Virgil, and even though I know what happened to him, she thinks I'm lying, so it's time to go check Virgil's lab area, which is now abandoned and full of synths and turrets that will absolutely fuck your day up if you are not careful. I did spend a little time looking for Virgil's cure, but I honestly couldn't be bothered. Once I had the files that Dr. Lee wanted, she agreed to come back to the Brotherhood. I still had to actually greet all of the scientists for the Institute quest so I could leave, but it wasn't too bad. The reason we needed Dr. Lee back with the Brotherhood is so we could get Liberty Prime back in working order, and the first thing I needed to do was make some limb actuators, or something like that. They required high-powered magnets, and guess who happened to have enough lying around in his settlement storage so I didn't have to work for them? If you guessed me, you're spot on. Once the actuators were built, I had to go and acquire Liberty Prime some nukes for his arsenal. The nukes were located somewhere in the glowing sea, so it was time to go back there and do some sleuthing. It was also time to get every fiber of my being torn apart by a legendary glowing rad scorpion. I eventually found the building the nukes were in, and I had to battle through a battalion of ghouls to get to them. Sadly, the nukes were protected by a devote cultist, and I was sent to meet their maker at the hands of Adam's wrath. The second time around, I wasn't playing any games, and I went in guns a-blazing. After an easy victory, I put the signal device close to the nukes and traveled back to the airport for Liberty's repriming. Now it was time to deal with Dance, who was actually a synth. I hate that everyone in the Brotherhood is instantly hateful towards Dance when they figure out he's a synth. The only one who actually seems to care is Halen and myself. Halen gave me a location where Dance would most likely be, and I went there with good intentions. I might be Brotherhood through and through, but even if it goes against your lifestyle, I don't really think killing someone is worth it. So with that said, I took some great mentats and convinced Dance to not let me kill him. Elder Maxon was not happy with it, but I convinced him to let it go. Since Dance was no longer a member of the Brotherhood, Maxon gave me the rank of Paladin and it was time to bring the railroad to a permanent close. Since I was being backed up by a bunch of Brotherhood members for this op, it was a piece of cake. Even the actual base where the Brotherhood didn't follow me was pretty easy. In all fairness though, I'm a flame-wielding maniac in power armor, and the best they got is Glory, who just kept running away the whole time saying, do you think that's going to stop me? Well, eventually I figured it would or I wouldn't have tried it, you silly. Now there was only one last quest to do to get Liberty Prime back up and running. We needed to get the Beryllium Agitator from Mass Fusion. Proctor Ingram was to join me for this op, and I was cool with that. I had to ride in the Vertibird to get to Mass Fusion, and I half expected the challenge slash playthrough to end right there. But after the Vertibird takes enough damage, they let you out on the roof, so I was all good. The majority of Mass Fusion was pretty easy, except for the fact that I had to use Ashmaker for a bit, and it was still pretty bad for the most part. When I got to the Agitator, I only had a few plasma cells left in my plasma thrower, and I was keeping them handy for the security bot that I had to fight. After that fight though, I was forced to use the Gainer due to a lack of ammo in all of my other weapons. Of course, that didn't stop me from helping my brothers and sisters fend off the invading synths. With the Beryllium Agitator in my hands, it was time for the last quest, eliminate the Institute from the Commonwealth for good. You know, after I stocked back up on ammo for the fight. Once I was ammo ready, I put the Agitator in the back of Liberty Prime and began following him to the CIT ruins. I can see why some people hate this part. He moves slow, if you get in his way, you're toast, and if you're wearing power armor but no helmet, the game has no condolences for you. After I went very out of my way to catch back up with Liberty Prime, we arrived at the ruins. Everyone was here for this battle, Maxon, Ingram, and a whole slew of nameless NPCs that could take bullets for me. Prime started to dig a hole for us so we could get down into the Institute, and we had to protect him until he was done. When I say we, I mean them, since I barely did any work. Once we were all inside, Maxon gave me one final task. I had to take a pulse charge and stick it to the reactor so we could blow the Institute sky high. So, how was this part? For all it's worth, it was easy. Aside from the synthetic gorillas, those were scary. Really, the only difficult part was getting around since I had no idea where I was going half the time. I eventually made my way to Father and listened to his final words. Then I fulfilled a promise to myself. That was it. The rest of this was child's play. Even the legendary courses were easy. I put the pulse charge on the reactor, talked to Maxon, and was teleported to the teleporter. Of course, when it was time to see my robotic son, I hastily refused. Then Ingram teleported us to watch the fireworks show, 
and I beat Fallout 4 as a pyromaniac. Okay, this cannot be classified as a challenge. It was just too easy, even on very hard, for the most part. Now, that doesn't mean that it wasn't fun or anything. It was actually one of the more fun playthroughs that I've done in a long time. So be sure to try it and tell me how it goes in the comments. I promise you won't be disappointed. Come check out the Discord, we have a lot of fun there. Also, come check out the Patreon if you feel like supporting me in a different way. I'll leave links for both of those in the description. A huge thank you to my patrons, Mickey Sweets, Riley Anderson, Jamie East, and Untamed Pineapple. Y'all are the best, and until next time, stay safe out there, and peace out.